Welcome everybody who's joining us right now online. Uh, we have a really fun session today. What we're going to do, you can see behind me, we have this set up and we are doing a live recording of how, how to get multiple angles in on one video. And then we're gonna edit the video and show you how to do some, some editing in Camtasia. We're gonna talk about four different software that, that we'll address and show you how to use that you can have. Um, they'll work on Mac or PC. So those are all good. The, um, you of course have a list on your agenda of other software that you can use. And if you need help on those, you can just go to YouTube and just look up how to do it. In the meantime, I'm going to share my screen and show you just what we're gonna do today and where you guys can access the videos for your assignment. So let's share the screen and I'm going to also share my audio. And all right, so we are on the agenda. If you if you had your email that I sent to you, it should have been, let me just make sure, it should say something like webinar starting now. And then you have down here, this link to the agenda. When you open that, then go all the way down to the bottom. Oh, by the way, we are changing a little bit of this up because as we started looking at, like we wanted to do some syncing digital audio next, but I believe that belongs really in the advanced category. So we're gonna switch some things around and put the syncing digital audio in advanced settings. Next week, we'll, uh, We'll, we'll do a little more of this video editing and look and see what you guys did on your video. But in today's, if you go all the way down to the bottom of the agenda, you're going to see week four notes and then this assignment, which is um, edit and produce a video in, in uh, editing software. And you can see we have download and install a video editing software on your computer. That's gonna be step one. Step two is gonna be, um, you're gonna drop two to three angles for um, a performance into your video editing bin. And this is where it's gonna be. Joel's just linking these right now. And then we'll have one angle, two angle, three angle. That's access to the videos. You just download them onto your computer and put them into the video editing software, which we'll show you. And then we're going to drag those videos to the timeline. We're going to line them up. We're going to edit them. We're going to add some transitions. We're going to export it, upload it to YouTube and share it. So the entire video we're going to show you how to do today. All right. So let me see if I can grab this gimbal and show you what we're doing here. So we also made a little introductory video to our setup and I'm uploading that for you guys right now as well. It gives you a walkthrough of how we set up our lighting for this, how we um, just sort of how we planned out the shoot a little bit as well. Yeah. And that, that actually is really, really cool because it's, we just walked through the lighting and what, what things we're using for that. This um, is that $79 gimbal that we talked about. And we're going to show you how to use that one. What's that for? This is for creating motion shots really, really smooth. I lost you. Oh. It's for creating smooth motion shots for your videos. Um, and the way it works is I just push this power button and then it'll turn on and notice it kind of runs itself. I lost you, Aaron. So can you get the rest of you guys hear me? No, I can't see you. 
Josh, do you have uh, someone else pinned? Or no, I have you pinned. You're okay. okay. All right. Um, so I'm not sure why you can't see. If you go up to your the top thing where it says videos, maybe you've got your view set. I think when you different. stop sharing your screen, it like minimize Zoom. So Pat, if you want to like click on Zoom again, it'll probably open up Aaron for you. Yeah, that's probably what happened. So notice as I move my arm here, the camera stays pretty steady. I'll come around. I'm going to go ahead and open up the free app that came with it. This is a, the DJI one. And I'll just select the device. I may have to, if I have a problem connecting, it may be that Joel's mm -hmm. device is connected to it. Joel, any chance you could turn your um, Bluetooth off? So this actually connects through a Bluetooth as well. I open my Your phone's Bluetooth. not totally in shot, Aaron, just so you know. It's a little bit low. There you go. Yeah. What's that? All right. So I've got this. Uh... Huh. I think I have to hold these three buttons down at the same time. One, two, three, connect. And I have to pair it. Is this both compatible for uh, Android? iPhone and Android? Yes. Okay. So there you can see how I move my thing around and it just keeps a real smooth motion. But if I hit this, uh, this button twice here, it'll actually take it into a landscape mode, which for piano is usually better. You can see it'll move up and down. I could also lock with my trigger button. So right here, there's a trigger. If I click on the trigger and hold it, this is what happens. So click and hold. Now I can move around. You can see how the camera just stays in place, even though my body is moving everywhere. So if you're looking, you want to just shoot the piano, you see that, and then you let it go, and then you can turn and it turns with you. That shot's really cool if you want to get like, uh, if you want to do the pedaling and you just lock it, and you just come down to the pedal and back up. So it takes a little bit of time to learn how to use this. I would say a Beethoven Sonata takes longer to learn than it does to learn how to use the gimbal. Mm -hmm. Of course, it may depend on who you are. <laughs> Regarding compatibility, um, I have an eight plus, so it's a larger size phone. And the uh -huh. only way that we could use that device with it is if I put a permanent magnet on the back of my phone, which I didn't want to do. So we're stuck with having to use only my husband's 12. His, phone, his 12. phone? Okay. So are you saying these little stretchy things? Yeah. They're just, they don't open long enough for yours? Right. Mm, okay. I didn't realize the eight wouldn't fit on that. Okay. Anyway, it's a, it's a really cool device and I can't believe it's only $79. The things you can do with it are really cool. There's uh, if you click on this button twice, tick, tick, you can see it goes into a sport mode and it allows you to move your camera very fast and it'll follow you. So you can do quick motions. You let it go and then it's back to the slow, steady, smooth moving. Um, let me go ahead and walk you over here to, hey, Joel, did that one video upload? I think what I'll do is I'll just show that video and let you guys see what we did. Um, the 
this guy to sleep and set it down. And Joel, where is that video? Same folder. Let me share my screen. Sorry. It, yeah, it's in the inspector gadget folder that I created. So just go to that link. Oh, so the whole thing is in this one folder. Yep. Gotcha. And I labeled them. So the overhead cam, lights and camera setup video is the one you're you're wanting to show right now. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and do that. Make sure I'm still sharing my audio. So hey everybody, we it. wanted to show you our setup here for recording. We're gonna be giving you a video. Josh, can you give some thumbs shoot. up if you can hear? And I just wanted to show you how we set things up. So first, let's start with the lighting. You'll see we have these four lights. The reason we have these set the way they are is this light's gonna be able to come in and get the right side of the performer's face. Okay, so we got lighting coming from right here. We've got this light over here as well. This one's going to give us light on the left side of the face. Now the reason we have these two lights up and you can see they're tilted a little bit and they're up higher is so that way we can get this light on the keys, right? We want the keys to be well lit so we can see exactly what's going on. Now um, what we're going to be doing for cameras. Oh, look, one more thing about the light, by the way. These lights, um, we adjusted the color temperature. I know Aaron has talked about that a little bit. You'll see it says 4500K. That is That has to do with how uh, orange or how blue the light is that's coming out of there. And, and these ones are adjustable. So we're setting these all to 4500K in part because the lights above us are also a similar color temperature. Now this is getting a little bit advanced, but it's something that gives your videos a little bit of an extra uh, polish when you can match your color temperatures. And then to take it a step further, I'll be recording with this and I can actually set the color temperature, they call that the white balance, to 4500K. And that just makes it so all of our lighting is consistent. You might think, well, why is that so important? Well, if you think about it, everything that the camera captures is light. So if you're getting your light just, just right, then it's gonna come out uh, a bit better. Now, a couple other other things. We're using this little cell phone gimbal. So this I'm going to use for um, kind of like a moving shot. And this is really nice because I can get in here and I can just move around and it'll keep my shot nice and steady. Okay. Also, up on the ceiling, we decided to go ahead and put this little um, rig up here. Now, this is just a microphone stand. Okay, now we did have to put a couple of little hooks up there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but we did put a couple hooks on the ceiling. And then this is just a microphone stand with a flexible gooseneck and then a little microphone clip and it's holding a cell phone up there. Now you could also clip a GoPro or a other small camera that way as well. And then we can get this overhead shot. And so we're gonna be recording that. And uh, the other thing Aaron put back here is a little GoPro. And this will be a great shot through the piano and right into the performer's face. So if I come over and sit down here, you can see what that camera angle is going to look like as they're performing the piece. So these are just considerations of taking a few minutes to make sure we've got a good setup. And then that way when we shoot our video, we're going to have better footage. And that's going to be a lot edit, uh, easier to edit, and it's going to give us a really great quality video. So, hope you guys like this. We're going to be shooting a video here really soon, and we're going to give you the footage so that you can practice doing some of your own editing. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you, Joel. That was a great explanation of that. Um, there is one more thing I probably will want to add into this, but I'm going to do it later. Um, so our first assignment is to open Camtasia and we're going to drop these, uh, looks like we're missing one video. No. No, they're all there. Front face. Okay. We've got this one here is also a video. So we need to take um, these three Aaron, videos and put them What I don't there. have is the audio that you were, if you want to show that or not. I do. I will have that on this computer. Um, should I just drop that in now? Yeah, why don't you drop it into Drive real quick? It's just yeah. drop it in that folder. I don't know if, if people know how to do this, but I mean, this is pretty easy. If you've never seen this, I have the audio on my computer here. It's just a WAV file. So I think what I'll do is just call it audio. 
um, audio for Inspector Gadget. And then all I have to do is drag this on to this folder here. So let's drag it and drop it. And now it's in the folder that you guys should have access to. I believe if you don't have access, Joel can set it to, to access. Uh, so anybody Every, has access. Everyone should have access to the link. Okay, so it's open access. All right, so now we have the audio as well. So our next step is to open Camtasia and set up our project and let's do this. Uh, again, Camtasia is what we're using today, but we're gonna actually shoot four software that we use. Um, the four software that we're gonna use, Joel, do you wanna mention what those are? Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Do you wanna mention real fast what, uh oh, what the four software that we're gonna cover are? Um, yeah, so we tried to find like what are gonna be easy software programs to use because there, there's a lot of options out there and we can't cover all of them, but um, Camtasia is the one uh, we're primarily gonna be looking at today. This one, um, uh, they, I think they do offer a free trial. Um, it is a paid app, but it, um, it does a really great job of making editing simple. And that's one of the reasons we like it. Uh, I know Aaron really enjoys using it for a lot of projects. I like it because it's so simple to use compared to like the really powerful software. You can do like a ton of movie editing. If you just want to do some yeah. really cool things and you don't want to get a degree in, in a video editing software. Yeah. 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 The other, well, some programs can get very complicated. I, I heard, uh, I think it was David talking earlier about uh, another program called DaVinci Resolve and the manual for it is like several thousand pages or something like that, um, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but I mean, so we, we don't want to um, overwhelm anybody with um, things that are too complicated. We will show you guys like the basic stuff on that but today we're going to be looking at camtasia um there's also imovie if any of you are using a mac computer that's free uh and it's available on mac so that's convenient um and then there's filmora, uh, filmora is one, another one um that aaron would like to show and then um davinci resolve is kind of out of all of those it is the most powerful one um and and you can really get fancy with editing if you want to but um so we'll, we'll but we'll just show the basic stuff on that as well and that they do have a really nice free version of that program as well so all right let's start we have this file menu i'm going to go up to file and i'm going to save this project as inspector gadget remix and the reason aaron's saving it now is because then as he edits um he can just quickly save his updates. If he didn't, if he skipped this step and then his computer crashed, he could lose all the work that he's doing. So it's, it's a good idea to save your project in advance like this. The other question is where do you save it? So you need to pick a place where you know how to get to it. Otherwise it'll save it by default into your documents in Camtasia. Um, let's see, I am actually gonna save it in a folder on my desktop where I have content, Camtasia files, and I'm just going to create a new folder here. New one. We're going to call this one Inspector. It's, it's, it's a piece that I wrote for some students. And we'll save the project in the folder. Click OK. And now we're ready to start grabbing our files. So how do you get the files? First of all, I created my folder. Um, if I come over here on the desktop, I'll prove that I saved this folder in this Camtasia one called Inspector Gadget Remix. Now you can't see the videos that we shot. What you want to do is take them off the drive and put them onto your computer and make them live in this folder. So we're organized. So way to do that is you go to 
the agenda link that we gave you. See if I can find that. In the agenda link, remember you just click on this folder that Joel showed you and you have everything here. And you can either download all of them at the same time, or you can uh, you can download them all as a group. I'm going to just download the ones that I need, and I'll show you how to do that one at a time. So here's the overhead one. Uh, if I double click it, it'll try to open it, and it won't know what to what to use. So you have to go in here, and you have to click on this little download thing on the top right. So I'm going to click on download. Music, and I'll click download anyway. Uh, so now this is going play. to a place on my computer. Those of you who haven't done this before, okay. if you click on this little arrow, you can say show it in the folder. And in the folder, you can so it'll show you actually where it downloaded That's to. Okay. So this one. Audio, audio. Audio actually put it in my downloads. I'm going to actually move it from my downloads into that folder, but I might as well do it with all of them. So let me go back to number two, the lights and camera. We don't need that one, but we do need this gimbal one. So let's go ahead and you can highlight it, I believe, and then click on this little button and say download or do it like I did before. Click download anyway. There's number two. While that's downloading, I'm going to do my face shot. Download. Uh, and now you can see why we've, we've made this one super simple for you, because there's, there's still things you have to learn, like how to download these things. And then I have one more that I'm going to put in there, and this is my audio. And <laughs> this is not actually part of the project, but I'm going to show you how I cheat with getting the right notes. Download. All right, so now those guys are all downloading. These two are done and this one's still spinning. It's 1.3 gigs, so this one's a little bigger. And these are now done. So if I came over to that folder, I had the downloads folder. You can see I've got one, two, three, and four. Wait a minute, yeah, one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna highlight all of them. And I can either right click on it and say copy. Those don't look at the right ones. Some oh. of those audio looks like an 83 kilobyte. You want to grab the bottom four, I think. Thank you. Good catch. I'm going to go back to my downloads folder. And now it's showing the right ones. It was just not loaded is what was happening. I can either copy and paste it over to that other one, or I can cut. I like actually using this cut feature because it deletes it out of my downloads. And now when I come over to my inspector gadget folder, um, where is that one? I believe, oh, got to get the right folder. So I'm on my desktop and then I totally lost, oh, it's under content. And then under Camtasia files, I've got Inspector Gadget Remix. This is where we wanted them to live. So I can either drag it here or I can just paste it here. And now I have all the files where I need them. Okay, so that's probably one of your trickiest steps. Once you get those, then we can drag that into Camtasia. I'm gonna minimize these windows and show you two ways to get them in. So the first way is you can do it right from your Camtasia window and you can click import. You can find the folder you're looking for. So I go to my desktop, my content, my Camtasia folder, my inspector gadget, and there they are, one, two, three, four. I can just highlight all four of them and open. I'm gonna show you another way to do that. Way number two you're is open. you can have this folder open and you can just highlight the four and you can just drag it into the media bin. Oh, wow. So now I've got all four of those folders. It shows three of them here because three of them are videos and one of them is audio. 
Um, I'm not going to need that audio just yet because the first thing I want to do is now take my three videos once they're in the bin and we're going to move to the next step. Let me go back to show you where the steps are. I believe it's on our agenda. The next step is to drag the video clips to the timeline and then we're going to line them up. We're going to make the cuts and we're going to add some video effects and transition and then we're going to export and upload to YouTube and then share it. So we're on step number three here. Step number three is drag these guys down into your timeline. Um, I'm going to put the very bottom one and you can do this too. You can do the is it called front face? Overhead, yeah, the front face. This is the one that I'll probably use the least. So I put it into track number one. On top of that, I wanna use my overhead cam. And then third, I wanna drop in my gimbal one. That's gonna be my most important one. Okay, at this point, you have all these files and they're not lined up at all. So you have, you can see these audio waves and this is the easiest way to line them up. And it's super simple. Let me zoom out by holding the control key down and doing a mouse scroll. And I can now see my wave files don't actually line up with each other and I need them to. So if I do this and that, you can see they kind of line up. What was the question? How are you doing that? How are you lining them up? How, what are you pressing? To... So I just click it and I drag it. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm dragging it visually to where it looks like my little spikes come in together. But the problem is I'm zoomed out so far that I probably am not right in line. So if I scroll in, and then I put my little cursor on one of these spikes, you can see the others are not really lined up with that. I'll zoom in even more and you can see they're really not on. So the way you do that is you can just drag it until you feel like it's perfectly in line like that. And then this one, you drag it and now you're in line. I can zoom in even more and you can see what I thought I was lined up, I'm still not lined up. So I can do some finer adjustments here. And that should be, I think that's as close as it's gonna let me get. Okay, so now when I come over here to the music, all three of these audio files should sound together. If I'm misaligned, listen to what happens. Or if I have it slightly off, It's a mess. So I'm gonna put those guys back. And now you can hear it almost sounds like one file. Now, the second thing that I wanna do is I wanna mute two of these files. And as Elizabeth mentioned earlier, the, the file on the phone that's moving around may not be the best one. If I want to Second edit place. this. I'm on. Calvin's going to the job. You got anything? I'll hit the edit button. The and then I can just drag this until it disappears. So this is really loud. This is silent. Um, and then this one here at the bottom, that is the front facing camera. I already know that one I wanna get rid of. So now I'm only keeping one track. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, so now how do you edit the video? At this point, we need to, um, to edit the video. I can just drag this first one over here just so you can see what's going on. And now you can see this one behind it. Oh, this is an interesting one. Let me let me drag Eric. this one. 
Yep. Aaron, quick question. Why do I need to mute? Why, why do I need to line them all up if I'm just going to be muting them all? Well, because you want your fingers to line up with each other. And so if you want your fingers to line up with the other, other tracks, you're going to mute the other two video tracks. But if you've lined them up, then your fingers will line up with the same audio track. Oh, so you're lining up the audio to sync the video. Yeah, yeah. so think of it this way. If you line up the audio, then the video is already gonna be in sync as well. So it's, it's, you're, get, you're getting two birds with one stone there. Oh. Yeah, now I got this video here. I've got a problem, guess what? It recorded sideways. Is there any way to fix that? Yes, there is. Um, this thing has a little rotating button and you can just turn it sideways like this. Not to mention, I don't want my head in this shot. <clears throat> so this is something that you're gonna need, <clears throat> excuse me, this is something you're gonna need to know how to do. And that's called um, clipping. So if you click on this, button right here, it's the crop button, you're gonna to wanna to crop certain parts of this out. So now, instead of dragging the video, I'm just cutting off certain portions of this. So let's say I just want my wrists and this one, I want to take down to here oh, and me. cut the part of the piano off that I don't want. I can even cut and just do, hey, I just want to see my fingers only. And then if I want to expand it, you have to go back to this button here and make it big. So then you can put, like, if you want to do a tutorial video or whatever, you could do that. Um, but I really want to fit, <clears throat> I want to fit this to my screen for this particular video. So what I'm going to do I'm going to try to just fit it to the whole screen, um, which means I'm going to want to move this up again, probably all the way up there. And this, I might want to move all the way down there. And I think it's a little crooked, which makes me a little unhappy. You notice you can turn it so it's not crooked, which is kind of cool. Um, the problem arises that is <clears throat> you're going to get into some different some different issues so we don't want to get into those right now now i've got this one set to the full screen i'm just gonna whoops <laughs> wrong button you got to switch back to this one and so now you can see i'll just put it up here you can see all of my video clips run simultaneously <laughs> want to have this in part of your video where it shows them simultaneous. For today's purposes, we're not going to do that though. Um, I want to just show one at a time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these back so they're big again. So we'll drag that one. Wait a minute. I got to start with this one because it's the it's behind. So this one is actually going to be hidden. The reason it's hidden is because it's on track one. Track two covers it up and track three covers it up. So three, track three is the one that's on top. Um, this is track two, I'm gonna drag this. And now it's the full size of the frame. And then the last one is the one that's on top is your, whoops, there. So that is the one that I wanted to be my main one. So at this point, the only way to show the one behind it would be to cut, make, we'll make a little, this thing is, you're cutting, it splits, called the split tool. You just click on this and you can see that I've actually split this video. And if I drag it out of the way, now I can see what's behind it. If I come back over here, now you're back to this video. And as you drag this around, you can see where the video is. Um, let's say I want to split this one as well. I'll do the same thing. I highlight it. You can see this little yellow bar around it. And then I click the split tool. And now once it's split, I can just kind of drag this out of the way. 
and you can see that face shot now. And then when I move over here, you can see the overhead. And when I move over here, you can see the top view. So you can just kind of drag these around wherever you want that to go. So if I hit the play bar, oh, I have an issue. I put my audio, audio yeah. on this last clip over here. That's not cool, which means I can't drag that audio can, can you detach, or the audio disappears. Can What's you that? Detach the audio? I believe you can detach the audio and then have it just one track by itself. Um, Let's see, how I'm, do you detach the that's, audio? That's right correct, track, Aaron. Um, separate audio, separate and audio and video. Okay, so the way you do that is you right click on it and you say separate audio and video. Mm -hmm. And it'll be one track by itself. So now it's one track by itself. And that one, the video actually should belong on the very bottom track because, or the audio I should say, should be the very bottom. So I'm gonna move these guys up. I'll just select them all. Um, I can actually see if I expand this or make it smaller, you can see how you can see more of your tracks. And now that they're all highlighted, I'm just gonna drag it upward. And now I can drag my audio to the bottom. If so I just click it and drag it over here. Whoops, now it's not in place anymore. Or is it? Actually it looks like it is because it's at the very first. Mm -hmm. Now these guys, I'm gonna put this, um, probably want to, actually I wanna do one more thing for you. I'm gonna drag these guys up, upward because I wanna reserve my first track for something else later. All right, so now that I'm separated, now if I wanna split this one here, I move my little splitter or my, uh, I don't know what they call this bar. It's where you currently are. And then I will click on the split. And now you can see I've split this one. So now as I drag, you see the first, the over the track number five is the is the gimbal one. Track number four is the overhead one. Track number three then is the face shot. And then I come back here, you see the overhead and the gimbal shot. So now is where the artistry comes and you get to decide where you want to make your cuts. This is when you hit your space bar. Your space bar starts and stops the audio. You can drag over here, hit the space bar again, and it'll start playing. Do I like that one? Or you can mute this track here and say, I don't want to see this one for now. I just want to see this other one. If I do my overhead shot, the click, we're gonna trim that stuff out. We do that at the end. I do not like this shot for my opening shot at all. Um, honestly, I think the best shot is gonna be this, this one right here. That's actually a really good one. And I think it needs to go longer to see how. Now, maybe right on that do 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 do, we do a sharp cut. So I'm going to zoom in, scroll back out of this, and I think I want to do maybe my face shot here? Let's look and see what the face shot looks like. And then right here is where I want this hands to come in. So let's back up and see how we did. Did you guys like that or do you think 
I should have had that reversed. Maybe cut right to the hands there. If you don't know, just give it a try. You can just drag this one over and say, let's just go right to the hands. What did you like better? I like that one first, yeah. That one better? Second one, that you. one better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that one. How long do we go before we switch back? feel like it should just do the first part right on that ding. maybe just a short one three, four, two, two, three, four. and stop right there i'll make another cut and i'll separate this one here and do we want to go to that shot or do we want to go to this shot I do number three i think is not split yeah i think three that went to the face i think this one i meant to go all the way to the edge of this i have to zoom in sometimes you can see that will kind of snap to that other one those should actually snap there we go okay keep the back here or is that a good spot to go to the fingers i almost feel like that we should go right to the fingers cut the top one split uh did i split that i didn't split and then let's move this out of the way and let's go back to the fingers right there on the beat face shot would be a good one here you highlight it split it it's like opening the curtains for the face shot so i've got these two curtains opened oh i can't use that you know why look at cameraman's Joel's in the way <laughs> yeah the cameraman's in the way of this one <laughs> so all right since we can't use that one let's see if we can use this one can't you cut him out though? though? I could cut him out if I wanted to zoom in. That's actually a really good, good point. Uh, um, that's clever. You're very smart. Why don't I do that? How do I do that? So uh, let's see. Click on your picture. Yeah. So I, and at this point, yeah. What, what you need to do is make a cut at the first part and the second part. Like, so let's cut it right here. Yeah, cut it there and okay, then so cut it again somewhere like further down. So let's cut it maybe over here. Yep. And then and apply now this it back point, to just that um, clip. So, so I can cut, let's see. I can take this guy and we can start trimming out some stuff. Let's well, trim that. Oh, yeah. Or you could just, you could just blow up the clip. You, you don't even have to crop it. Um, that's true. That could be easier. The problem with that is then I have to zoom out so I can see a little more. And then. So just scale that clip up to like a hundred. up like that. And you can see there's a little line around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if I wanted to back up, you can see where he is. Now, He's Aaron, still not... move the clip to the left because you see how I, it still shows me there. It's kind of there. Yeah. You go. And maybe I want to get rid of the light too. Yeah, there you go. Or if I want a little light for the cool, cool effect of the light there. Yep. 
Um, so you can mess around with that wherever you like, but this is what it looks like now. Whoa. Your clip's well, not quite lined up. I think I can just drag this over to the left and then this one should snap to a grid right there. And I don't like so much that thing. I there is an effect that we can so put you on like a that, zoom that in. Little, that little square, you mentioned something about that little square. Um, that's what's gonna get exported or something. Like that little tiny square yeah. and the big square and all that kind of stuff. The inner square is the, the actual inner square. video view. So that's what we'll export. Everything out here. Everything out there gets dropped, basically. Yeah. So now, now I want to see the fingers again. So I'm going to drag this one. Actually, I don't know what this one is. Let me look at that one first. Do I like that one better? Or do I like that one better? And then maybe right there, I go back to that shot. What's that, Joel? You're muted. Sorry, I said you're coming up to the fast moving part of this song, right? Yeah. Okay, um, I think, and, and just because I shot it, I know that you probably want to use the clip where you do the fast runs well, from the gimbal because I did extra motion on that part with the, gim with the gimbal. Yeah, let's look and see what that is. And let me zoom out here, just watch it. So that's cool. So from a from a um, cinematic kind of point of view, um, because I knew as the cameraman, I knew that the faster moving part of the song was coming up. What I did is tried to complement that with faster moving motion of the camera, um, so that there's some cohesion uh, between those parts. Yeah, and there's less editing to do, like to try to make it like snap to this shot, to this one, to this one, because you got a lot more in in the moving camera. Yeah. I think right here, I want to switch to another one, unless Joel has something cool here. Let's see what Joel has first. I mean, it's cool and all, but I feel like we need a cut here. Right there. So let's part the curtain and let's see what's behind it. Maybe now we put it back. camera fell off into the piano so the gimbal that we had on there we didn't tape it down or anything or not the gimbal the the gopro one i played that last chord and it, or the accord before that and it bumped in i think joel moved over and he picked up the the keys there okay so that is basically uh, now at this point you can just do some fun things um i think for the most part we've got what we need Recording. Um, Can I ask a question? Yep. About the opening. So to set that up, all cameras are on, correct? Like your yes. GoPro's on, and and then all of that, you know, in between time, you're gonna cut and splice and all that, or pre, 
recording is all that's cut off, right? That's correct. We turned on all three cameras um, simultaneously. Now, if you don't have three cameras, you can do the same thing with one camera, mm -hmm. but you have to line up your audio with the first shot that you made or with, with the audio that you're going to keep. Otherwise, your, vid your video is not going to sync up with your fingers. Right. So if you, I mean, that's the, that's the trade off. So the trade off is you're going to do, you're going to have to either line up your second and third takes with the first one, um, which means you're going to have to play the audio track in the background so you can hear it and play along with it. Um, alternatively, you could just shoot them all simultaneously and then everything's going to line up with your cameras. If you have three cameras. Mm -hmm. I personally find it easier to shoot them all on separate phones because I'm really good at lining up my tracks now that I've done it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a great question. Uh, now we need to talk about like the first part of it. I don't know if you saw me clap here. Joel, do you want to talk about Joel, this? Sure. Uh, quick. So that clap that Aaron just did there, if you zoom in and Aaron, can you temporarily turn the volumes back up on those audio tracks so we can see them? Yep. So edit audio. Oops. Edit audio. Um, how did we get back? Come I think on. if you double click it, maybe. Nope. No. I don't know what that did. Go to the audio section in the top right of that track. There's a speaker icon top right. When you have it selected, uh, if I select this one here, oh, enable magnetic track. I don't even know what magnetic track means. That's I the think, one that you got from the speaker, but you need to go to the gimbal and you need to. Go I think to the, the problem is I can't I can't see this enough, so I have to expand it here. Oh, and then I right click it, edit audio. Clip. Oh, that's the speed. You can actually go with fast motion, slow motion. We're not doing that today. Oh, you know what? Because you 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 took all the audio out and one, on one track, I think it's just showing one track. I believe this one though it should allow me Aaron, to drag. So click click on the clip, and then in the upper right, do you see the speaker icon? Like upper upper, upper right. right of the whole program. Okay. See the speaker icon up there? Just oh, I high. do. Yeah, that's your gain. It's already set to hundred, and I think what it is is I've I've just minimized this. When I edit the audio, you should be able to just drag this up, but I'm having issues getting it. Like this one right here, you can see how you can drag it up and down. The you should be able to do that with this as well. But I think On Camtasia, they may have seen... I've, I've noticed that if you have multiple tracks like this, um, to see the audio, you actually have to separate them. Okay. Like and separate already, audio from video. I've already cut this one up into pieces. So. Well, anyway, the clap that Aaron was referencing, that's so that <clears throat> when you have a definitive moment in time, like a snap sound, it makes it easy to line the clips up because you can see that uh, they call that a transient in the um, in the audio file. So if you zoom in, Aaron, on that one clip uh, that has the clap on it, that one there, you zoom in pretty far on it. Yep. So that mark right there, that that's the audio, and that's right when he clapped. So what you could do then with your clips is you can find that moment in time on all three clips, and make sure that they all align. And if you do that then everything else in the video will line up. And so that's why uh, having, you know, you, uh, you've seen in the movie things, they have the little, the little movie uh, clapper thing that they use, like take one, snap, and they do that um, in part to help line up uh, different angles. Yeah, I'm gonna put my volume just a little bit louder on this. Uh, right there. Okay, at this point, I've, I've determined I've got everything good. I just need to 
And I found it easier if you just highlight everything and then you right click and you say group. If you group it all together into one group, now you can do your cuts and splits much easier. So I wanna come in right to, let's see, after I clap, I'm getting ready to play. Let's see if this is a good spot. So maybe just a few seconds in, I can fade into it right, right there. So I'm gonna cut right here and throw this away with the delete button. And then I will drag this to the very first part of my clip. And now you can see where I start the whole video. I like where that starts. Now I have to go find an end. <laughs> Looks like we got a bunch of stuff we got to trim off the end here, huh? So this is basically the end of my video. And then I can either fade out right there. I think that's good. I'll just do a walkout. And you can do you can cut it off earlier or later. Fade, 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 and stop. A little back. I'll zoom in. Go right to where it cut. Right there. Okay, so I can just do the same thing. You just cut it off and you delete it. And my video now is one minute and 30 seconds long. And I have the whole thing done. Another thing that we like to do is add some trans transitions. So a transition would be like, I wanna do a fade in. So if you click on the transition button, you've got all these choices of some really cool fade uh, transitions. Let me just drop a couple of transitions in there for you. Um, some dumb ones that I wouldn't use. <laughs> the bar swipe. Actually, that didn't turn out too bad. I didn't, didn't mind it. You can actually take, if you zoom in, you can expand that transition so it goes takes a little longer. Let's double how long it takes. If you don't like that one, you can click on it, hit delete. You can try the arrow slice, drop it in there, back it up. Oh. Didn't like the arrow slice. Yeah. Do you want a barn door? Let's try a barn door. That's a little interesting. I'll tell you the most common that you see is going to be fade. So these are alphabetical. If I come down here, you can just drop this fade on here. And that is your most classic intro, just a fade in. And I'm going to zoom out again, hold your control key down, scroll with the mouse wheel, and then I'm going to drop a fade on the end of it as well. And let's just come over here and see the end fade out. Now you might say, I want a, I want more of a fade on that. So let's just zoom over here. We'll zoom over here in. I need to hide this thing, it's in my way. And then you just drag this a little longer and look and see if you like that fade there. I actually like the longer fade better in this one. I am okay with the beginning one being shorter. Joel, is there anything else before we before uh, we shoot this video? Should we watch the whole thing first and see if there's anything you catch? I have a question, Aaron. I can wait until for. Yeah, go ahead and shoot your question now. Uh, when you when you uh, divide them, why do you do that? What's the advantage of dividing a track that you did? You put on one side and the other side. What advantages is that? What can you do special? Think of it. Think of it like a curtain. The curtain is like if you open the curtain, you can see what's behind it. 
So my video was like that curtain. The only thing I could see was the thing that was on the top track. I had to actually part the curtain to see the other video behind it. And that's why we split it. We're splitting it so we can see what's behind it. So you can see the other angles, is that it? Yes, that's correct. Can you split um, them just once or? Yeah, and so there's there are th if there's three videos and you've got the top video in the way of everything and you want to see the third video, you have to split, you have to open the curtains for the first video and the second video so you can see behind it to the third video. Otherwise you wouldn't see it. Otherwise you just you see the first curtain. Oh, I see. So no, no, so that opens it up. Yeah, just think of it as curtains that are in the way. You just have to open the curtain to see what's behind it. It's like sequencing on the computer, different instruments, correct? Yep. I mean, you have it's very similar. Very cool. All right. Can anybody see anything else or should we go ahead and watch the video? Um, this is where you need to know a couple of things here. If you click and drag this, it'll allow you to see a bigger frame here. And you can say, I want to see 50%. It's about there. Or you can detach your frame completely. And then this, this will get a little tricky. If you expand this with the expansion button, you can see the entire screen. And if I zoom in here, then I'll be able to see more of this. Um, let me just hit right click. I'm gonna reattach the canvas because this is the tricky part. Once you get it detached, it's really tricky to go back in. If I hit the um, fit screen, you might be fine with just watching it like here. Pretty good video. Um, who saw what on there? Did anybody see anything they didn't like? Your audio and video are slightly off. I think that's that's going to be Zoom. You're talking about oh, Zoom. So, so when I lag? export it on my computer, the because the, it was completely synced on my side of it. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. I I noticed. Uh, almost kind of like a speed up motion like it almost kind of went into a, a faster motion at that maybe the th a third of the way my guess is it's going to be uh, another the zoom problem okay. Okay. your your zoom was just trying to speed back Process. up to catch okay. up yeah processing um did anybody catch a shoe that didn't belong <laughs> yeah. you see that uh, so what do we, we do with the shoe? Just cut that. We could so zoom can, in there. So you can frame. splice. You can splice at that point, and then just like, bring your your uh, tr track in. Then I personally kind of like it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave it. 
It'll be like one of those things. Who found the shoe? <laughs> I like the lighting on the keyboard. It's so good. Yeah, the lighting is really good. We set that up in advance. Oh, is that the ceiling one? That is the ceiling one. Well, it's actually also these two lights on the side too. You can see those two lights. Perfect. Perfect. Those are lighting the keys up. Yeah. Overall, is I think it's uh, it's done and it's ready. So what I didn't do was save as I went. How many of you have lost projects because you haven't saved enough? I'm gonna hit save right now. Okay. Um, the next step is then you need to get this exported and put onto YouTube. So let's go ahead and do it. We click on the export button. You click on local file. And then you start, um, it's right now it tells you the dimensions is 1920 to 1080. I'm just gonna hit next. Um, this MP4 is a perfect version. Uh, you could do different formats, but MP4 is good. Hit the next button. And at this point, I'm gonna go over to size and I'm gonna make sure this is 1920 by 1080 and that this aspect ratio is locked. So don't forget it's 1920 by 1080. If you want something smaller, it's going to be a little grainy. If you want something bigger, it's going to be harder to load. So this is kind of a, a really good setting here. And then I'll hit next. Um, this thing you don't need. I'm not going to talk about that. We'll hit next. And now it's going to ask you, where do you want to save this? Better charge my battery. Okay. This is charged again. All right. I think I want to put this in my same folder. And right now it's taking me to a wrong folder. Like that's not where I want to put this in creating tutorial videos. So I'm just going to click this folder thing and I'm going to go up until I find the folder that I'm working in. I'll put it in this inspector gadget remix one right here. Hit save. And now it's in the right folder. It's really important. You know where you saved it. I hit finish. And this thing will give you a little bar and it'll render. So while this is rendering, who has questions? I have something, I have something to point out. Yeah. So like when you were going on the fast part, uh, you smiled like toward the end, which was That's kind of my favorite part of the whole performance. You know why I smiled? I, I assume it had to do with Joel. I have no idea. It was a blooper. Oh. Our, our camera fell down. Oh, that's when the camera fell down. The camera okay. fell down and I was just laughing <laughs> as I walked away. Well, I was, when I, uh, I had never recorded myself until we started doing online stuff. And um, when I perform, I'm, I'm super stoic, like yeah. not on purpose. I'm just focused that way. Yep. And it's really uninteresting to watch. Um, <laughs> but when I'm doing something that's really challenging on the piano, I make funny faces. I stick my tongue out. Like I make these kissing, like puckering. <laughs> it looks I, really I do too. Silly. And um, just something to note when you're recording is your facial expression.